Hello everyone and welcome back into our second video of the rebirth of the boring into a tune dream engine series. So uh, I haven't tuned this engine yet. This was a very very cool amazing uh, you know video not video cool amazing engine uh, you know requested by Mr. Armor Motors on our uh, on our Discord you know channel or you know group channel over there. So I've, I've asked everyone after the after the previous video before this one the 1967 uh, the Ford 300 cubic inch in line six engine from everyone on the group to participate and you know uh, typing the most boring engine they can ever think of. And uh, I've received really really some true amazing well they are amazing because they are classic but they are boring and I really do mean really boring. So before we before we crack on with everything else, enjoy the video, that's my number one priority. And of course, hit that like button, get subscribed, and share the video. And of course, you can watch uh, the the whole series of the Boring into a Tuner Dream engine. I'm gonna put the link, I think, here, here on the top. You can press this link and watch the whole series and the whole playlist if you want. Alright, so this engine is a very, very boring engine. As we as we all know, the 70s were, you know, the oil crisis and a lot of, a lot of companies started to you know, choke their engines back then so hard to uh, to make them very very efficient when it comes to emissions and fuel economy, and that works. That works. Uh, you know, when you want to choke the engine to produce less emissions, but when it comes to performance, yeah, that killed the engine extremely hard. And this is a classic scenario of that point. So I like the name of the engine. That's my first point to say. The Pontiac Iron Duke. I mean, the name itself is just superb the iron duke very very good name all right so the the engine is actually a big engine this is not a tiny engine it's a, a two point you know you can say two and a half liter uh, inline four engine so it's a pretty big engine so it's an inline four cast iron block uh, push rods two valves with cylinder and of course cast iron cylinder head as well uh, of course it, it was made in 19, 1977 moving on it uses a regular cast internals, nothing special. Uh, the compression ratio with with this with the first setup or this in particular version of the Iron Duke has 8.2 to 1 compression ratio and uh, 39 on the cam profile and of course no VVT and no, no none of none of this crap because it's the 70s. Uh, plus three quality on the uh, on the camshaft and it, and everything related to it naturally aspirated of course. And this engine run runs with using the help of a uh, two barrel carburetor, a famous actually two barrel carburetor by Holly, I think it's called the Two BBL. Uh, I got this name from the same dude who who suggested this engine. This is a famous Holly carburetor, and, uh, and I've seen some uh, YouTube videos also about some dudes also running this carburetor these days, but you know the modern version, not the classic version. So uh, two barrel carburetor, standard intake manifold, running on regular leaded 92 octane fuel, not bad. Uh, let's see, not normal air fuel ratio, very basic ignition timing and 5000 RPM, that's the limit of this engine. Uh, plus 8 quality, I, I had to push the quality a little bit, you know, so I can uh, use 92 because, well, the horsepower and the torque of this engine yeah, they are not really impressive. That's why using 98 on this particular power will be like will be really unnecessary. Moving on, cast log uh, header as you can see, exhaust header, very very basic and very cheap exhaust header, single exhaust pipe, one and a half inch exhaust diameter, baffled first muffler and reverse flow second muffler, and the results can actually speak for themselves. Here we go. The engine is making 80 to 84 horsepower and 124 pound-feet of torque two and a half liter that's extremely big for a for a for a for an inline four and it's producing only 84 horsepower I mean it was a challenge for me not to make it powerful no it was a challenge for me to choke it to make it low on power so I can you know so I can get these figures because uh, you know if, if you are just you know, using the same specs without using uh, low low ignition timing or low cam profile, you will get nearly 100 horsepower. Easy. That's that's that just that is just the stock figures, and I had to choke the engine down so I can reach these figures. So the engine is the engine has normal normal reliability for a 70s engine. 
and uh, it's it's heavy yes it's very heavy i mean 167 kilograms that is very very huge for an inline four engine uh, production units very low which is awesome and uh, engineering time also not bad running on 92 lighted fuel emissions are through the roof and well it's 1977 so 13.8% is good not bad and service cost is very very good and the engine is quiet 29 points running silently so this is the engine in stock let's fire it up and see how it will sound this is the curve of the engine as you can see it's super torquey at low rpm that's that's the whole point of these engines to produce very good amount of torque on low rpm and you know not so much on high rpm yep silent nearly silent Alright, so this engine is actually, according to Mr. Armor Motors, he, he, he suggested that engine. It says here, this engine used timing gears instead of a chain, and no balance shaft, felt like you were driving a tractor. And he has a three of them. Wow, that's awesome indeed. I would love to see them. So Mr. Armor, if you are listening, when you are watching this video, I would love if you can send a picture of this engine on the channel group so we can actually check it out so we have the the stock one it's very basic very very basic indeed uh, was designed to good fuel economy and this engine was actually used uh, let's say a 1977 Pontiac Phoenix Pontiac Sunbird Chevrolet Monza AMC Concorde AMC Spirit Jeep CJ uh, Buick Skylark Chevrolet Renault AMC Eagle Chevrolet Camaro also Oh, can you imagine your Camaro? Can you imagine driving a Camaro with 80 with 84 horsepower? Oh my God, that would have sucked a lot. Chevrolet Celebrity, Chevrolet Pontiac 6000, Buick Century, and the list is going on and on and on. So a lot of cars receive this. Yeah, this engine. I'm not gonna say any bad word. So now let's let's take it and let's say that you have you are, you are or you already have this engine in 2018 and you want to bump the quality of it so where is it I forgot how many horsepower 80 horsepower so let's search for it here we go Pontiac Iron Duke so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone the variant come on give me a clone here we go we have the clone now let's bump it to 2018 and start you know putting great parts on it of course before I start bumping it to 2018 please remember that automation game is about producing engines so the game right now thinks that okay so you are producing this engine in 1977 so when I go to 2018 the game will think that the company is producing this engine in 2018 so basically it, it will use it will automatically use you know good parts so the horsepower will increase everything will increase here and you know a lot of changes will happen so yeah as you can see so going from 1977 all the way here so the comp shafts are getting better we have extra two horsepower a lot, a lot more fuel efficiency a little uh, less louder a lot more a lot more reliable a little lesser weight but i don't care about any of these so basically it's still the same engine which is good let's say that you have this engine no nowadays in 2018 so what we can do let's try some different scenarios so the first scenario that I'm gonna go with is a cheap one uh, getting a different exhaust system because well it's a very very choked exhaust system let me show you the flow bench the headers are choking the exhaust is choking but the intake is actually very good so you can actually keep using the same carburetor rebuild it or buy a new one it will work perfectly but the exhaust is restricting so let's pay attention to that let's go from a short cast header let's say that you bought the latest version of this engine which has a short cast headers instead of cast log so let's see the difference 86 horsepower 92 horsepower just by changing the headers that's a good thing now let's try and delete the first muffler oh that's good it's using this same crappy exhaust diameter delete the first muffler and getting a, and getting a junkyard uh, headers from 
you know a modern version we added a lot of horsepower it's mm, let's say nearly 13 extra horsepower and four pound feet of torque now that's good now let's try and well let's see here because I want to use modern fuel so let's switch to a 95 octane fuel unleaded and now I'm gonna try and go with zero quality because to make it more realistic alright so now we have the same carburetor we are running 95 octane fuel unleaded of course so the next step you can actually bump the exhaust diameter by like from one and a half to 1.8 inch that should that should actually release more power increase your rpm limit like extra 500 that is good so far but all of these things are very normal the next thing you should do with every carbureted classic engine when you are using a higher octane fuel is bump the ignition timing just by bumping the ignition you will actually gain so much check out the horsepower and the torque just by adding more, ad more advanced ignition wow that is an absolute amazing result 142 pound feet of torque and 116 horsepower this by the, sa the same engine we just have a different exhaust uh, headers from a junkyard you know a later model uh, 1.8 inch exhaust diameter and we deleted the first muffler that's it and we added uh, more ignition and we are using modern fuel very very good now let's increase the rpm no, not 6,000, 6, 5,700 will be enough. Now let's fire it up. We have extra juice now. That is good. Wow, so if you... If you have this engine and you are dry, you are still driving the Pontiac Phoenix with this with this classic engine, wow, you will gain a lot. I mean, check out the difference: for 124 pound feet now 142, and we started with 86 horsepower now 116 horsepower. So we gained extra 30 horsepower. That is awesome indeed and very very good. Right? Yes, of course it got a little bit noisier because we have deleted the muffler but it's still very good it's still reliable it's still and it's more efficient that is, that is very very good so everything is good the engine is running perfectly nowadays now the next step you can do of course is changing the camshaft of course you can go to car to comp what they call car, comp cams whatever company and purchase you know a high performance or a performance camshaft so let's see what kind of differences we will get because i don't want to lose torque Oh, here we go, it's starting to lose torque. So if I want to keep it on 142, here we go, like this, 54. That is a sporty, as you can see, we are in the yellow zone. So we are using a sporty camshaft. Good, <clears throat> that is really good. And now we can actually raise the RPM. So the engine actually can go a lot higher than stock because uh, the, yes, the bore is very, very big and the stroke is very little. So yes, the engine can rev very high actually. So now that because we have we are using a different sportier camshaft, we, are, we can actually bump the ignition timing a little bit if it can work. But unfortunately, no, we are actually losing horsepower. So actually putting it on 63, yes, will give it one will give us 129 horsepower. That's that is very good, very very good indeed. So what we have is 142 pound feet of torque and 129 horsepower good so what happened is so what is happening is uh, that we are we added we started with 86 now 129 that is very very big significant significant increase and using a different camshaft yes we gained a little horsepower and the same pound of torque but we have moved the curve from low rpm to very high rpm like to 6000 instead of 4800 that is a huge difference if you if you want to rev higher but if you are happy with your with your low low rpm you know uh, your, your low RPM way 
we're you know, driving this engine, you can keep it. But if you want to rev it high, it will, the, the whole driving experience will be much, much better. Yes, we have lost, I'll admit it, we have lost a little fuel efficiency, but this way you can actually you know, rev higher. But if you want to get more efficient, you can actually tweak the your carburetor to squeeze in less fuel, like 14.0, this way. You can have better fuel efficiency, a lot more RPM to rev, and very, very good. So the engine is running perfect. How about upgrading upgrading the uh, the intake manifold? Let's see if upgrading the intake manifold and putting a high-performance air filter will do any difference. Hmm. Yeah, you can gain, you will gain more horsepower, more torque. The engine will get much louder, service cost will increase because you have to clean the air filter frequently and yes, more fuel efficiency. But now the engine should sound oh, magnificent. So the difference between a standard and performance is shorter runners, thicker uh, intake manifold on this side, but shorter runners, and of course a high performance air filter instead of a, uh, you know, a, a, a box or a snorkel or whatever. Whoa, listen to that. Is very good actually <clears throat> changing the air filter uh, maybe the, maybe the intake manifold will be a challenge to find but the air filter will be easy an easy swap yeah that is very good very very good indeed now let's say that like, you, you are now saving a little, a little money you are enjoying the power the extra torque but you are not really happy yes you are not really happy I mean it's still 130 horsepower engine that is crappy I mean a, a Toyota Corolla will will smash you because the Pontiac Phoenix is a pretty pretty heavy car really American heavy car so yeah you want more so the next step save up some money save up some cash my friend and now you can actually go and buy an aftermarket header you know exhaust header which will which will actually increase the airflow yes extra three uh, three pound feet of torque one extra horsepower you can change the exhaust diameter to you can go with two inch instead of one one at 1.8 inch and you can change your muffler to a straight through muffler if you want I, yes it will make your exhaust much much louder i mean yes really loud and yeah i think yeah i think the neighbors will be upset so let's go let's go back to reverse flow yeah we don't want to upset anyone and of course your new exhaust system is a little higher quality so plus 3 quality should do the job that's very good 133 horsepower the exhaust should sound much better good that is very very good you are enjoying the power you are you are trying to power slide your phoenix around corners you know trying to do a burnout but it's impossible with one with 145 pound feet of torque so you want more so let's see is it good to go with four barrel you know change from two barrel to four barrel or should we go with fuel injection kit let's see so fuel four barrel all right let's see the difference 134 horsepower 135 horsepower so what we gained here is two extra horsepower a lot more throttle response smoothness is better yeah so i i think a new four barrel carburetor i think these days you know a good one is an expensive expensive invest to do so you can go with four barrel if you want and increase the ignition timing but i don't think we'll gain any extra horsepower no we are maxed with with 135. All right, 135. So my advice to you is to go s directly to EFI. Four barrel for, from two barrel to four barrel. Yes, you will gain some good things, but no. So you, my advice: save up a lot of money, save up like 2,000 bucks. I think these things cost, and go and buy a Holly EFI kit and check out the difference between a 4 barrel or, or a 2 barrel and EFI. Wow, fuel efficiency much higher. We can run on 91 octane fuel easy. Much more reliable, better, better in every single way. And look at the emissions, so low. 
So an EFI, an EFI. Of course, the EFI kit will not will, will not will not look like this. It will be like similar to a carburetor, but with fuel injection in it, and fuel injectors in it, and you have to put like a, a coolant temperature sensor and an O2 sensor in your exhaust, and you have to use the touchpad or the screen, whatever controller, to determine the capacity of your engine and what kind of shaft you are running and uh, how many cubic inches and you know what kind of fuel to set a base time a base map and it will tune itself automatically very very good thing I promise you I've seen so many videos and it's a really efficient thing to do so since we have all of this power all of this uh, fuel efficiency let's run 91 octane fuel and let's try and run a parallel converter maybe a high flow three-way kind of converter that's good we have lowered the emissions a lot so your car is now your, your Phoenix your Pontiac Phoenix is is eco-friendly now and it's very efficient you will be saving a lot of fuel and it's much much more quiet because of course we have still we have we have a standard performance a standard uh, if multi-point EFI so let's try to go with performance so from standard performance yes because we used to have a performance you know, carburetor setup. Let's go with performance EFI. All right, since we have all of this juice, how about the ignition timing? That is good. So on 88, we have 140 horsepower. That is good. So you have tweaked your your engine at the dyno using the EFI and everything else, and now you have 140 horsepower and 153 pound-feet of torque and your car is running eco-friendly using the magic of a catalytic converter that is very very good now enjoy your power enjoy everything and you can actually now save up and buy a, a real sporty camshaft so let's see how high we can go yes we are using a little bit of torque but I don't want, I don't want to lose so much so let's let's bump it to plus five quality all right, let's say 70, a very sporty camshaft, and let's increase the the RPM, no, 7000 is too much, so 6700 RPM, that is good, that is really good now. Yes, we have lost some of the torque, but check out the horsepower and the RPM. It, it may not be a good setup, actually, if you want to move, if you want to move your, your RPM range so high. But 69, I think, is good. And we are running 91 octane fuel, so it's much cheaper. Check out that beast now. I think the next step, I'm not going to open the engine because some of you will say in the comment section, why not open the engine? Why not put higher compression pistons in it? Well, that will be not bad, but it will cost money. I don't know how much it will cost, but I think tearing down the engine, If I mean, if you have a very low mileage engine, why, why do you want to tear it down? Yes, you can make great horsepower using a higher compression pistons in it, but why not going turbocharging? Because turbocharging, I think, is it's much cheaper from tearing down a whole engine yeah I mean I think these days you can change the camshaft uh, you take your stock head and uh, resurface it I don't know what they call it and you know they can increase the ports so to allow more 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 air in all of these things will add horsepower but tearing down the whole engine if you have a good engine and the pistons are still compre you know compressing air very very good you know the you can do the compression test if they are still in within spec you don't need to tear it down go turbocharging my friend check out the difference don't worry about the knocking we will fix it with a proper turbo this is to the max this is to the ground and let's see 55 let's go down to so how much to run the engine on, on the same setup? So if you want to run the engine on on the same 91 octane fuel, oh my, wow, 5 PSI of boost. That is that is actually very very low when it comes to boost, like 5 PSI. That's a very very low boost. What is this? 
Engine is knocking. Okay. I want to try and make it super efficient. So a small turbocharger, a small intercooler, ball bearing, 5 psi of boost, should make your engine run perfect. But we are running so much ignition timing, so let's decrease the ignition to 70 and let's bump the boost into a respectable amount. Okay, so 8 psi of boost should be good. So the turbo can kick in at 2300, not bad. Alright, now everything is running good. So we have a turbocharger, we are still using the same old exhaust system. As you can see, it's very restrictive. So it will be better actually to bump your exhaust size. 2.5 inch exhaust diameter should be very good. So nearly 200 horsepower. That is good. 194 power feet of torque, 194 horsepower. Very, very respectable numbers. Let's see the newborn beast. That is good actually. That's a that's a very good engine. So now with the turbo with the help of boost, with the help of the boost caboose, now you can actually make your Pontiac Phoenix to drive nicely and the fuel efficiency has increased a lot, so you'll be saving a lot of money. So if you have decided to go with 95 octane fuel, you can actually you can you can from you can you can, you can go with a bigger turbo from the start. You don't need to you know wait to you to your, you know for later because you'll be burning a lot of cash this way so if you want to start with a big turbo from from the start go with 95 octane fuel that's my advice like 12 psi boost should be perfect all right now we don't need a bigger turbine compressor nope we don't need we don't need that also. 50 millimeters, okay, so that's good. That's good indeed, so I don't want I want to I don't want to play with the air fuel ratio, I'll keep it simple. The, the same count shaft will actually Alright, so this way 74 will be will give us a peak peak power at 6100 RPM. That is good. How about the flow bench? The exhaust. Ah, the intake is restricting. All right. So a single throttle body will not do. But I'm not gonna go with throttle per cylinder because this is very expensive. I'm gonna try and keep it simple. You know, you have to save up step by step. No, I'm not gonna go with. Let's see, like this. 13.9 should be a bigger exhaust type diameter. I want to see the final result. No, keep it. 46, I think 46 is very... No. 42, alright, so 42. That, that, I, that, that I can live with. So straight through muffler, bigger exhaust diameter, 3 inch exhaust diameter, turbocharged EFI. Now let's try and bump the ignition. Yes, that's good. That is very good now. Now this is an engine that I can that I can respect. No, let's do it like this. A little less boost. A little bigger. No, no, we don't need that. All right, so we are running good. Good indeed. Turbo, let's say plus two quality or plus three quality turbocharger, 2700 RPM. I can live with that. So now this beast has the final result 235 horsepower and 224 pound feet of torque. So remember, we started in life with a two barrel carburetor, a crappy cast log header, and 80, 86 horsepower 
and 86 or 84 I don't know and 124 pound-feet of torque the same internals the same well ac according to automation game the same cylinder head but of course in real life you will take it off and you will you know surface it and of course you will uh, play with the ports a little bit to make them to, to flow much better change the head gasket and of course uh, we, we switch from two barrel into an EFI single throttle body you can find a lot of kits these days to do that and then we have sa saved up much much more money and we have turbocharged the engine instead of going naturally aspirated and you know blowing our money on forged internals which will not really help because the current internals can take very good amount of torque check it out 310 pound feet and we are running with a turbo 225 pound feet so we have so much more room left to rev the engine and to put more boost on it but this way i think it's it's running super efficient very reliable very powerful very torquey since we have started and very much fear you know very much low on emissions we started in life with 9999 points now it's only 206 that is very good so much responsive much better a little bit extra heavy because of the heavy materials but now your Pontiac Phoenix will fly off I want to try one last heroic approach because I would really love if I can get like 250 horsepower so I can say it's like you know 100 horsepower per liter or something like this or you know similar horsepower to a similar capacity that should be much more efficient than this I want to get it to be an efficient engine you know when it comes to capacity so we have to sacrifice a little bit of you know fuel efficiency I, I apologize but let's try and go nuts here. So, camshaft. Alright, and this way, no. Alright, why not? So, let's see. No. Because I want, I, I don't want to tear the engine down. Tearing the engine down will cost so much money, you know, adding more compression in. Alright, let's see the turbo now. Putting a bigger turbo. Putting more boost in. No. So it may require some work. I mean, you can reach 250 like this, but the turbo will be a little laggy, like 3000 RPM, which is not really efficient. So what we can do here, yes, a bigger, fatter intercooler should do the trick. Two fifty-three horsepower. I want to try and get fifteen. Alright, that is good. Here we go, 15 15%. I want to get that 15%. 253 252 horsepower or 251 and a half. Alright, I can live with that. So it's it's two and a half inch yeah, sorry, two and a half uh, liter in line four and two hundred and fifty one horsepower. I can live with that. Now that is much more efficient now. Yes, we have we have lost like one percent, but we gained much torque and much horsepower. Ninety-eight pound-feet of torque, twenty-one horsepower at idle.
that is a very good engine now so that's that was it uh, that is it my friends so we have we have uh, converted a very very boring engine from the 70s with very much very less horse very, very very low horse amount of horsepower and very low amount of torque into a 2018 beast yes it may not be like a 400 horsepower engine or a 500 horsepower beast you know because you can see a lot of inline four engines these days with turbos that can do this this amount of horsepower and this amount of torque with much less capacity but if you are loving this engine and if you have if you have the very very good memories with this engine or if this, if this was your first car and you want to keep it and, and you know if you love this car and, and you're, it's your first car and if you want to enjoy it and make it you know and tune it to be a, a beast you can do that or you can just ls swap your car you know for much less money and you go and smoke the smoke the tires on every single corner so it's up to you my friend i i really i really love the name of the engine the iron duke this was a very very good this was i think the greatest name for the engine and i would love to know actually if you, if you can think of a very good name for an engine like what's the best name ever you know given to an engine i know that some of you will say the rb24 or the rb26 or whatever no these are not actually you know good engines good engine names these are just you know model names or series names you know scientific names but what's the best name that was given to an engine in the past or these days i would love to know that in the comment section below and of course i would love to know from you uh your you know your thoughts about this beast here do you think this engine worth the worth all of the problem you know to to tune it from the past into the into the current future into the current you know technology or do you think that you, we should actually strap it down and send it to it to the junkyard i actually like this engine it's a very good good and tough and reliable engine uh, but it requires a little a little money not not little you know too much money to be to be revolved into 2018 so tell me what do you think in the comment section below and uh, again don't forget to you know if you if you can think of you know a very great name for an engine that was given to an engine in the past or these days i would love to know it in the comment section below i apologize for the long video but this was a very very great experience and i wanted to go with you step by step so this was the pontiac iron duke uh, the video number two after the rebirth, the, the rebirth or the reborn of the, uh, the boring engine into a tuner dream engine series. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to hit that like button, get subscribed, and share the video. And of course, you can watch all of the previous, you know, uh, videos on the playlist for the boring into a, into a tuner dream engine. Blah blah blah. And I'm gonna put the links. I not here, here, whatever. Just press the link and enjoy watching. Of course, to support the channel, I would love if you can support the channel by visiting and signing up to my Patreon page to get exclusive contents and, of course, to uh, to, to download all of the special cards and projects that we have made in the past. So, thank you so much for watching, guys, and goodbye for now, my friends.